All right. So, uh, what's up, guys? I made that post on Reddit, and it turned out to be one of my more popular posts. In fact, I think it's the second most popular post. So, I'm gonna go ahead and show everybody, you know, how to uh, how to do some decent decent art. So, this is not the template we're gonna be working with today. Uh, this is a template for a stick I actually just got on eBay, and I was going to do some art for that, but I think for right now we are going to pick up something a little bit more popular. Uh, here we go. Uh, you can download the templates from Tech Innovations or Focus Attack. I kind of lead more towards Tech Innovations as of right now. I actually had a pretty decently long discussion with the owner of Focus Attack on Reddit a couple days ago and apparently they're going to be implementing some features that help out. I don't know if it's going to completely fix my issues with them, but hopefully we'll see where that goes. Okay, so when you download it, this should open up whether or not you're in GIMP or Photoshop. It should enter this way. The very first thing you should do, the very first thing, turn on dust washer outlines. It, it's extremely important. Um, you can even turn on Sanwa outlines. So what's nice about the the template so far is that these outer rings, no matter what, are the furthest that your button will go. From the lip of the button that it goes down into the board to um, how far, no matter what kind of button you get, that's how far it'll go. So you don't have to turn those on. I might do some button art in this tutorial, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. But for right now, I just want to show everybody kind of the basics of it some good practices you should do and some things you shouldn't do. So I'm going to get rid of this really quick. Boop. All right. So next thing you should do, one of the very, very first things you should do, go into the outline. It should be whatever sticks outline it is. It's a layer on your right. It should be in GIMP or whatever. Very first thing you should do, select all of the outlines in here. Now, why do you do that? Well, I will show you in just a second. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass, um, dependence on what kind of stick you have. But trust me, you will see why in a moment. Some of the some of them already have this. All right, as soon as you have all of them selected using your magic wand tool, if you don't know how this works, uh, if you don't know how Photoshop works in general, go watch a Photoshop tutorial. <laughs> this one is specifically for what to do with fight sticks. Now, when you have these all selected, uh, again, you can select multiple things by holding shift uh, and clicking. So what you do, you make a new layer, make that layer, whatever you're gonna do with it, you're gonna select white at the top, and then you're gonna hit alt, delete. Now, what that does is it fills the layer with white. So now, no matter what I put there, like if I wanna go into the background and be like, black background, it'll, it'll automatically, it'll automatically fill those holes with white no matter what I put back there. So let me just be a little bit less stupid. And boop, see? So now, no matter what I put back here, it'll always go under those buttons and you'll be able to see what it'll look like all the time. All right, so now we're just gonna make something a little random. I'm not quite sure, I'll just throw something quickly together. Um, I have a lot of I have a lot of different art in here for a lot of different projects, but let's do uh let's pick something random. Should I make an Ela stick? That might be a bad idea. Ela's a character from Siege. For those who don't know, um, let's see. I see a lot of Persona sticks already. I'm not making a Dragon Ball Z stick. Every time somebody asks me to make a Dragon Ball Z stick, I cry a little bit. I know Dragon Ball Z is extremely popular, but, you know, I get it. You know what? Let's do a Pyra stick. So Pyra is a character from Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, she's very waifu tier, in case people can't tell. Um, so we're going to do a quick, uh, quick Pyra stick. So the number one thing that I see people make mistakes with so, got your character, you opened up in Photoshop. The number one thing I see people make mistakes with is they will do something like this. They'll go, 
they'll open up a they'll open up a uh, wallpaper they'll copy it they'll paste it and then they just like stretch it till it fits like this like try to get it as best you can and then they just apply and they send it for printing do not do that that is a horrible 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 idea reasoning one you need to be really conscious of the of the real estate that your buttons and your panels take up so notice that her face is entirely covered by buttons that even if you got see-through buttons that still just is a terrible terrible idea it will always come out less than stellar so and the other thing is the other quick thing is never ever ever scale like this never ever like use this for scaling when you're doing it with fight sticks with things that will be printed never scale this way when you do you are changing the resolution of the image so if you don't scale what's called being scaled squarely it's it's going to come out faded and it's going to look a lot worse when you scale anything while you're working in photoshop always hold shift and then go to the upper right most corner and shift and scale like this always scale like this make sure that you have um when you're scaling there's this button up here interpolation that's basically how the that's how the computer is interp interpolating the pixels that should be next to each other so when you have it this nearest neighbor what it's doing is it's taking the pixel that's closest to the pixel that you're scaling and making it the same color so when it does that it just basically is duplicating pixels over and over and over again so what you want to do if you have to do this if like every time somebody do, every time somebody asks me to make one of these I cry a little bit on the inside don't uh, just just um, if you have to make if you really want a wallpaper as your as your stick art which is fine I just think they're very very easy and boring to make scale by holding shift always 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 now next thing you should do next thing you should be aware of is if you're gonna if you're gonna do this you need to be aware you know of your real estate so notice how her face is entirely covered up by buttons again that's that's a no-no that's bad we are you do not want to do that so do everything in your power to use your real estate on most fight sticks that is over here that's to the left because most people are right-handed and press with their right hands and use their left hand for the for the stick so dependent on you know you have to be you have to be really important with your real estate so what you might want to try is something closer to this I still hate this I would never do this but you can you can finagle it something like that right uh, that's at least better than this right so do not under any circumstances put a character's face behind buttons if you can't help it in my opinion you should stretch this as far as you can and do something closer to like this where um, let me teach you guys another quick thing uh, select your magic wand tool go to the bleed tab click outside the red bar go back up to layer one that we you know made our buttons white just make that white so now you'll always know what your stick looks like you won't have to worry about everything outside it this is what your stick will look like when it gets printed so this is significantly better than what we had before right where it was just covering her eyes you couldn't see anything scale scale up as best you can so we're gonna go back to making a quick uh, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 stick which is a stick I had requested a couple days ago um, in case anybody cares it's on the free fight stick art reddit you can take a look at it I think it came out pretty good the person who requested it seemed to like it so we're gonna just make something relatively similar really quickly next do use PNGs if you don't know what a PNG is, a PNG basically means there is no background to the character. It'll it'll automatically take into account whatever's behind it. An example of not a PNG would be the wallpaper we had before. So if I try to put something behind the dark magician girl here, it's it's not going to work. There's there's images next to it. But if I wanted to put any whatever I want behind Pyra, I can do that. I can put a square there. And it'll automatically fit with her I can't do that if I wanted to just get this character 
I would have to cut her out, which is extremely tedious and extremely hard. And I, depending on how tough this is, I might do a tutorial and show you guys how to do that. But if you are new, for the love of God, just use PNGs. It is, it is significantly easier than having to cut it out yourself. If you want to know how to get a PNG, go into Google. Oh, that's not Google. Go into Google. Type in your character. So, like, I get a lot of Goku Blacks. So, like, type in your character, Goku Black. Then all you got to do, PNG. Just add a PNG into it, and you'll get a crap ton of stuff. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. So you can... And these are almost always PNGs. So if you see the checkered background behind them, it'll automatically... Photoshop will automatically assume that's a PNG. Use those. Next quick thing. If you are going to use images online, go up to Tools. Size. Make sure it is larger than 124 by 768. The smaller the picture is... The more you upscale it, the worse it's going to get. The more faded it's going to get, the more pixelated it's going to get, it is going to look significantly worse. So, just make it easier on yourself. Get the highest resolution you can. Find something you like. Just do that. So, back to back to our girl Pyro over here. So, as you can see, when I... Oops. We're going to go ahead and lock the background so that I can't move it. What you saw me do earlier was I was moving the background instead of Pyra. Don't want to do that. So, this is, this is our girl Pyra. And what you want to do is it really helps. Most people won't have this problem when they're doing this. I do a lot of fight stick art, so I sometimes have this problem, but very rarely. Um, being informed by what the character is from or being informed by... Uh, some of the some of the other things that the character does or being informed by the character's personality is moderately important to making what I would say quality fights to guard. So I happen to know most of the things that people request. So like when people request something really weird, like um, I'm trying to remember, somebody requested a character from a phone game that I'd never heard of. I always do my like due diligence to try and find out what that character's deal is. And it helps make the stick because I'm obviously not going to make the same stick for Ryu as I would for Pyra or I would for that character. So always be aware. So she's kind of, you can see her colors, you can see her palette, you can kind of see what she's about. I have played the game that she's in, so I know what her deal is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly just, I'm going to quickly just show you guys the basics of stuff that I do in order to get a decent looking stick. But this is, if, if all you wanted was the basics, that's it. Fill the buttons with white. Only use PNGs if you can, unless you're really skilled with Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop for seven years. If you've been using Photoshop for half the time that I have, go ahead and use whatever the hell picture you want and cut it out yourself. Um, other than that, or if you just want to use a, or if you just want to use a wallpaper, go ahead. You already know the basics. You're good after here. If you want to learn more about the, uh, the basics of actually building like a custom fight stick with your with your name with art that actually looks good. Um, I'm going to show you just a quick couple things that'll help you a lot more. So, first thing, there's a really simple technique that I like to use that a lot. If you look at a lot of the sticks I use, you'll see it all the time. So we're going to take Pyra. We're going to go to the layer she's on, which is layer two, which you should name yours, but I never do, and I'm very lazy. Um, so we're going to go over there and we're going to go to pirate and we're going to hit control J on Mac. It's command J. I hate Macs. Um, and what that did is it duplicated her layer. So now there's two pirates. So what you do is it's a really simple technique. Move her, move her over maybe one pixel, two pixels, three pixels, move her over just slightly. Then you're going to go to the one that's on the bottom, the original pirate, right? You're going to hit FX, and this brings up your layer styles. If you don't know what layer styles are, got to watch a regular Photoshop tutorial. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do something called color overlay. All it does fills in the shape behind her, right? All it does. All it does is it just it just takes Pyra, the, the Pyra that we wanted, and it fills her in with one color. And this is really important. So if you want any shape in from anything, all you have to do is get it, Put it in here and fill it, and it'll just automatically do so. 
don't do this weird stuff where you take the magic wand tool and then you can hit control shift i and then you hit like uh you can i'll just turn off the effect really quick i see a lot of people do this sometimes where they take the magic wand tool hit control shift i and then they just fill her in like this by hitting by selecting a color and picking alt delete that looks like garbage because it's not taking into account everything else this all it does just the image right if you use the magic wand tool for doing that stuff you not only you damage the image like if i ever want it to go back boom it's back if i fill it that's not what happens even if it works out so just use effects when you can always do something that lets you go back so this actually looks pretty good you can see the outline behind her i think that looks pretty solid um, the next thing i want to i want to entrust on people and this is my my least favorite thing in existence when you buy a stick please for the love of god buy a black or a white stick that means buy a stick that is either predominantly white or predominantly black one of those two colors so uh the hori wrap ends are black uh hori wrap v hori wrap four kai's are white and black but they also have like red blue and what red and blue right do not buy a stick that is a weird color do not buy a lime green stick i know you think it's cool at the moment but it's going to make making art for your stick infinitely harder mostly because if i wanted to make this for a for a hori wrap five right or a hori wrap four blue i now have to take into account the background of that stick so that means i'm going to have to make it if i want it to look as good as it possibly can it it now basically just has to be blue if i don't i have to do the i have to do um the edge in blue i can get around it through some ways that are a little advanced for other people but please from now on when you buy a stick make sure it's black or white or the entire top is covered it doesn't matter so much if the entire top is covered but it will make your life so much easier making art for your stick if it's just black or white. It also makes life infinitely easier for me. So back to back to our girl here. We're going to make something. I'm going to try and make something that's a little more different from the last stick I made. And this one's going to be a lot more basic. So I know she's from a game that's more uh, she technologically focused. It's, an, it's a JRPG. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my brushes, right? Uh, Photoshop brushes work with GIMP brushes. So most of the time, if you download a Photoshop brush, it'll work in GIMP. Um, what you want to do is you want to be relatively informed by what you're doing, what the character is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something pretty basic that a lot of people will have probably seen on my other sticks. Is I'm just going to take a new brush, which is, this is the binary brush. So as you can see, when I use it, do, 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 do. I'm going to make it a little bigger just to fit more with the size of the stick. And I'm in the bottom most layer behind Pyra. I'm going to eyedropper tool by holding alt, which just lets me take a color from wherever I want on the on the piece. I'm going to select the green that she's in because I like that green. And I'm just going to I'm just going to try some stuff, right? And I'm just going to put that down, put that down, and boom. Now I have this really cool sort of gradient uh, binary effect, which is pretty basic. I'm also going to remember to rename that binary so that I don't forget what it is. So now I know if I want the binary off, I can turn it back on. So the, the lesson here is use Photoshop brushes. Um, I am not an artist. I'm more akin to a graphic designer than I am an artist. Um, just, you know, be aware that if, if you're not particularly a good artist, then using official art and using fan art is relatively fine. Just, um, you know, don't, don't do what I see a lot of other people do where they take like official and fan art, put it on a stick and sell that to somebody. I'm, I'm not particularly comfortable doing stuff like that. So I don't think other people should, but I don't push my beliefs on other people. So whatevs, not a big deal. Um, so Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give, so the Panthera is pri primarily a black stick. So if I put an all white background on it, it's not going to look very good. So I'm just going to do this really quick. I'm just going to, all I did was I took the bottom most layer, filled it with black. I did that by selecting black, alt delete, alt delete just fills whatever your selection is. So this looks pretty decent just right off the bat, right? Um, 
and and that's pretty much the furthest I want to get here. The for like really really basic stuff, I just wanted to teach people. Please stop putting your characters behind your buttons. That's a horrible horrible idea. Always fill your buttons, and always make sure that you know when you're downloading something, download PNGs unless you're really really skilled at Photoshop. Sometimes when people like come to me with a specific image and they're like, "Can you cut this out?" I cry a little bit inside, depending on how small or how uh, crazy the image is. But most of the time, it either works out or it doesn't. The other thing is, you know, simple. This is this is an incredibly simple stick. This is way, this is way simple right off the bat. Sometimes is just better. Um, I do see a lot of really complex sticks. Some of them work out and some of them don't. So, last thing I think I'm gonna do. Um, I'm just gonna do something pretty basic that I like to do, which is just boop. Um, that won't work. Let's do. I dropped her I dropped her tool. Grab that. And then I'm gonna take then I'm gonna go down a layer. So this means I'm going behind that layer. I'm gonna go up here. You might have I actually did this technique on the other uh other stick. And we want something a little darker than that. Boop. There we go. That should work pretty well. Um, something actually a little better. This is a little bit more advanced, but I think it'll work out a little better for this stick really quick. This is how I make sticks very, very, very quickly. Um, sometimes if I get a stick that I am particularly attached to, um, like people sometimes come to me wanting like really unique sticks, and I really like those, um, I'll spend a lot more time on it. Um, I'll do something like... This is this is just me using the selection tool to get a basic shape, right? And you'll see the shape a lot. Like it's the sort of it's not quite the Japanese flag, but it's basically the Japanese flag, um, where you like have like these stro these lines. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just take uh, maybe I'll take that green. That green kind of works out. We'll see how that looks. Boop. That's all it is, right? So now it like makes these strobe-like effects. Then I'm just going to show you really quickly. There's an inner glow, which makes things just look infinitely better. Uh, we'll turn up the choke on that. So what it does is it adds like a little glow effect to the inside of them. And I'm probably just going to turn this opacity down. It's a little heavy. Eh, it's alright. It's not great. Kind of liked what I had before, but honestly this as is is pretty fine. I just wanted to show people quickly the basics. Oh, I might as well get this out of the way. Something that another person asked for specifically is how to do button art. Um, that is a little bit more complex, but I can show people the basics of it really quick. So what you do, you can go either to layer one or the Panther outline layer and do whatever you want here. Um, select those buttons. These are the buttons that you're probably going to be working with. Much harder to do this on a Razor Panthera because the buttons are so close to the panel, but um, that's not the point. Then what you do you go up to select, choose modify, then you hit expand. This is how I do it. There's lots of different ways to do art. There's lots of different ways to do all of these, but this is how I do it, right? So then you have like these circular motions around the buttons. And remember, the the circle that we have now is as far as the button will ever reach. Um, so then what you do is you just take the rest of it, and you hold shift for the selection tool. You just, you know, get these up, select these, bam. And there we go. So now it has like a decent circle around all of them, right? So what I'll do is I'll just take the uh, the green that we got going on, and I'll make a new layer, and I'll call this layer uh, button graphic. And what I'll do is, uh, so now that that's layer, that's still selected. And then I'll just hit Alt Delete. What that will do, oh, or not, Alt Delete. There we go. So what that'll do is it'll just, you know, fill in those buttons for me. So now we have these. It's kind of misshapen a little bit. I don't particularly like doing it this way because the circles aren't technically perfect. If you have geometric shapes you can use, those would be technically better. Um, but yeah, that's how you do the basics of button art. And you can and you can play around with it like the way I do it usually is I'll, I'll play around with these buttons for, for a while. 
Um, something I started doing recently is is I don't usually do buttons on um, free art. Uh, mostly because uh, on the free art giveaways when I do like the four or five days of giving away free art. I don't like, um, sorry, my throat is a little dry. Um, I don't like doing them because they take a really long time to get to the point where I like them. But just some like quick basic stuff you can do. Um, you know, you could take any of, I'll just find a brush that I like. I think there's a circuitry brush that I like here. Here it is. So like there's this basic circuitry brush. And what you could do is you could just, you got to place it a little more carefully than you would other brushes. All right, and see, that looks pretty good. And it and it, it's, you know, pretty close to our character. If I wanted to go really crazy, I could add in crazy backgrounds. I could add in crazy, crazy effects. Um, if people want more, like a video series of, of how to make, of how to, like some best practices for art, that, that might be something in my power. Like there's a lot of things you should know about like making particularly high quality art. But for the basics, you know, I just, I just wanted to give everybody some good practices uh, and, you know, just hopefully help out a bunch of people who may or may, or may not be a little confused about it. Um, you know, those the, the rules I said at the beginning and the rules I said throughout the, the video are the basic rules, right? Use PNGs. If you have to use a wallpaper, make sure you scale it so that the main focus of the wallpaper is on this side. So make sure your character is on this side or whatever the wallpaper is, is on this side. If you're if you're gonna do button art, that's how you do it. Just select all the buttons, go up to select, modify, expand, expand it by like 45 pixels. It might have to be bigger depending on how big your stick is. Um, try to use the highest res art possible. Um, do something informed by your character. Um, be aware of the dust washer. That's something I forgot to mention. Uh, one of the more recent sticks I saw that was actually pretty decent. It's just the dust washer gets a little too close to that character's face. Um, you just be aware of where that dust washer is all the time. And again, you can, you can be a little, you can be a little flexible with it, but you know, just try to, the, it will look infinitely better dependent on the decisions that you make when you're making it. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, just remember the, the basic rules, uh, always fill in these white parts, by the way, it'll make your life infinitely easier. That's not technically a rule. It's just, it'll make your life so much easier because you always know what this looks like. Um, all right, and I think that's it. Cool. Uh, later, guys. Let me know if you want me to make more videos like this. Um, I'll be doing another free art thing probably in a couple weeks. I got a, it's in the middle of a launch weekend for, for me right now. Um, yeah, I'll figure that out. Later.